you know, going through all that, I'm, I'm glad I did. It taught me how to be strong. It taught me to be a stronger, stronger man. It taught me to live up to it. But, you know, it, it taught me one thing that, you know, you're, you're capable of anything. You can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. There's no excuse, you know. Hey, sluggard, are you listening? I said there's no excuse why you can't work. Hey, sluggard, it's a commandment from God to go work with your hands. Hey, sluggard, and the face and the sweat of thy face shalt thou work. For out of what was thou taken? For dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. James 4, uh, 4.14 says, Four fourteen says, Whereas ye know what shall ye, uh, be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even but a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. You know, and we need we need to realize that our life is going to vanish, and that we only have a short time on this earth. So while while we're here, we need to step up and do a whole lot more for the cause of Christ. Don't just be a Wednesday or a Sunday uh, soul winner Christian, right? But also be an everyday soul winner, because every day thousands of people are going to hell. And I'm not saying you have to go out and you have to go knock doors every, every, you know, for the whole hour. Here's what I do. If I see someone alone by themselves, I just give them the gospel, right? Just do one a day, right? Don't, don't get me wrong, you know, one soul is greater than whatever this world has to offer. What about two souls? What about three or a hundred souls or a thousand? How much more greater is that? A thousand people are going to hell every day where the worm dieth not and where the flame is never quenched. And when they get there, it's too late. There's no coming back. They're going to burn for all eternity. And how would you feel if you knew that the person you could have given the gospel to and saved his soul from fire and torment of hell, or at least given him the chance, how would you feel if that person died and went to hell? How would you feel if you knew you were the only chance he had to go to heaven and you did nothing about it, you just stood by? Right? And don't give me this Calvary garbage where God you know, does all the work and he's the deciding factor. He decides who gets saved from from hell, that's a satanic false doctrine, right? Because the Bible says that the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Right? But Stephen, you don't understand. I'm going to college and I'm working nights. I don't have time. I said the same thing. I can't do it. I still haven't read my Bible to cover to cover yet. I said the same thing. Look, you don't get it. I'm too shy. I'm not a public speaker. People would be look at me like I'm funny. I said the same thing until one day a co-worker from my job who was alone, wasn't busy with anything, all the right circumstances for giving him the gospel were lined up perfectly. God, God said, hey, I want you to preach to this person, right? But I didn't do that. Nope. I mean, it, it would have taken me 15 minutes easily, but I decided not to. I decided to put it off while I focused on my career. I decided to put it off until I learned to read my Bible cover to cover. I decided to put it off until I learned how to be a, a more social and not so shy. Well, the next day, or that night he committed suicide. And he died without hearing the gospel. And his blood's on my hands. Because it was my responsibility. I knew what I was supposed to do, but I didn't do it. And all these excuses now seem so stupid. He's in hell right now. He's burning in hell. You know, he, he, he's suffering in hell in the fire and torment of where, where, the, where the smoke uh, ascends up forever and ever. You know, and it, it was my fault because I didn't give him the gospel. Right, and and they're not and the people in hell they're not they're not begging Donald Trump to say to to, to go talk to their families and save them. They're not begging these conservative party. They're not be begging the Chuck E. Cheese uh, churches down the street. They know who can save their family. They're begging a soul winner. They're, the buck stops with you. But you got to go get your degree. You got to go work out. You're just too shy. Well, do me a favor. Every day you choose to put soul winning off or choose not to come to church, I want you to stare at the ground. And remember that souls you could have won to Christ are burning for all eternity. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, 
and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad.